。各位观众朋友们，大家好，欢迎收看 J 与 J 论坛，我是 Jimmy 马马健，很欢迎我们的好朋友 James n o b l e j i m how are you? I'm doing fine, Jimmy.、Uh, happy New Year again. It、uh, New Year's getting a little older. It's a new year, a new administration. Finally, we can all breathe a sign of relief. Dr. Fauci said it best that he、uh, he has a liberating feeling <laughs> working under this administration, and a lot of us feel the same. And、um, what are your thoughts on on、um, President Biden's、uh, new orders? Seventeen different orders that went in, and what is your take on、uh, on the inauguration? It, I, I thought it was very moving, very touching. Uh. I- Yeah. Okay. Fine.、Um, uh, Enforce it. Out. You cannot. <laughs> nothing. Nothing to me. Nothing inspiring. Nothing、um, that. I, nothing that I hadn't expected.、Um, I, I don't think he said a lot.、Um, he said, "Oh, we need. We need to unite."、Um, but then declared war on things that he doesn't like.、Um, so I. You know, it's fine.、Um, he'll he'll move forward,、um, and I'm less concerned about any of the 17 new executive orders than I am about the trend that Mr. Obama started in using them. You mean repealing a Keystone Pipeline,、uh, well, rejoining one, the Paris? Yeah, that one. All of those, I, I think,、uh, are important in their own ways, but. What's happened, starting with Mr. Obama, is they didn't want to run legislation through Congress. You mean so, Trump did that? Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Obama started it, and what Trump did was come in and one augment it. And before he did that, number two, what he did was undo or issue new ones, which countered Obama's old ones. But because they did not have the force of law, because they weren't through Congress, he was able to repeal much of what Mr. Obama did, and that's exactly what Mr. Biden is doing. I love how and, Mr. Biden. I'm sorry. Go ahead. And so that's what's going on. I, I I think it's it's not a proper way to legislate or lead. I, I love I how suddenly when Biden's administration comes in, we start talking about the proper way or legislation. When the last administration did every way they could to skip Congress, but I think it's no, I, I no, no, I I absolutely opposed it when Trump did. I did it. I think he should have gone back through Congress for two reasons. One, that would have been the proper way、um, to do legislation. It would have been more transparent. It would have been、uh, more solicitous of a broad base of、uh, debate and decision making, and more importantly, it would have stood the test of time because it would be more difficult for your successor to overturn. Well, Trump never respected the rule of law or law and order. We both know that. You don't want to talk about transparent. We can look at the. <laughs> I don't know where to start. The felonies he's committed. But let's say, let's just say this: You're one of the few people that that wanted to for it to go through debate, to go through the proper、yeah. legislative process. You're one of the few, the, one of the few conservatives that actually did that. Everybody else allowed Trump to do whatever. But I find it very, very condescending that President Biden has been in office for one day, and、mm-hmm. President Obama's name is brought up. His legislation, continuation, repealing. Guys, do we at least agree that it was a mistake to get out of the?、Uh, A lot of these executive orders signed by Trump was mistakes, and well, we focus on the good things about about fighting the virus, about rejoining. I don't, I don't, I don't know why we're disagreeing on the fact that there's climate change, that renewable sources are important, that we need to have green energy. Like these are signs, these are facts. China is so. <laughs> then we, then, then, then we, it's not a political we, issue. We may have, we may have climate change. We may have we may. global warming. Okay, we may. We, we may. may. But the Paris、uh, Climate Accords are ridiculous. If we want to slow down carbon emissions, the absolute best thing the United States can do is export more LNG 
around the world and have a greater share of the world's economy burn LNG, which is very clean, which is relatively little global warming, get off coal, get off wood burning, get off some of the things that create the climate change. We have one climate. We could shut down our total economy here in the United States, and it would not make a significant impact in the total of carbon emissions throughout the world. You know, so this, this argument is, I'm sorry, this argument I've heard many times. Do you know how far, for all of us that criticize China for their uh, environmental transgressions, do you know how far ahead Asian countries are compared to us? Did you know that in Taiwan and Singapore and Japan or China, you, you don't even have the option of using plastic bags in supermarkets. Do you know that in Taiwan, when the garbage truck comes, people wait in line outside their house to divide up their garbage. So please don't tell me that the U.S. this, we are this and that. No, we just talk. We use it to punish countries that do not listen. Because we're the most obscene transgression on, on, on green, renewable. And, and please, just I, it already is Obama this. Biden this. Let's go back to what happens to Trump. Just because he left for a day doesn't mean this is over. Can we at least agree, Jim, in the last four years, could you tell me this? Look at China's numbers. Their economy grew by 18%. Look at the civil unrest in our country. Look at all the countries that, that we have allowed to do whatever they want. Could you tell me, four years of Trump in office, have we moved forward or backwards? And you, when you want to talk about Biden's speech about nothing special, do you remember what, what Trump said four years ago? Fire and brimstone, hatred. He's going to fix this as if our country's in trouble. Well, while Biden says, speaks about unity and healing and fixing things, there, there's a very big contrast of using hate and fear, using hope. This is a huge difference. So when he's saying, uh, well, it's all politics, it's, we got to get past this, this, this political divide. We're all Americans. We all have to unite. We all have to work together. If we cannot even admit that these past four years was a massive mistake and decline, then we cannot move forward. If we're going to start to talk about how advanced we are in, in green and, and, and renewable, we're not even close. Look at the numbers. That's why it's a farce to me that, that all, these, all these politicians talk about it and criticize other countries for it when we're the ones that are worse, because I live it. I know what's going on over there. Well, you know what's going on where? In China? In Asia. In, 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 in all the countries we criticize, you know, they, they actually do recycle. They actually limit emissions. China has more electric vehicles than we do. They, they're literally the four, and This is ridiculous. That's fine. I, I, if you say that's true, I'll accept it. I respect you. But that, so, how do they, so how do they produce electricity? They burn coal. No, they do not. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> they're, they're, they're building more coal plants all the okay. time. If you say that, then why is the Paris Accord a disadvantage to us? Because then we have no way to enforce it. We cannot get both ways. This is Trump's ideology, where you argue this way, and then we cannot, so, we cannot stand on both lines and so, argue both sides. Okay, so, so, so we sign all of that. D does, that does that enforce anything? How do you measure who's, who's emitting what? How, how do you stop, if you, if you believe China is well-behaved, how do you stop India? How do you stop Brazil? I, I, I think it's, it's, it, it's everybody going to a party, smiling at each other, having a cocktail, and signing a document, going home, and nothing changes. If you look at our numbers, we have improved up until President Obama's administration. We are cutting emissions. We are trying. Remember that these countries that are of repeat offenders, they were going through a phase of being from a, from a, from a, to going into a developed country, from a third world country. So if you want to tell me, hey, you know what? You guys cannot build factories. 20 years ago in China, we went through this industrial revolution. There was no peace accord then. There was no environmental issues then. But we made it into an industrialized nation. So we tell other countries, you guys cannot do it. We already made it. Y'all cannot. China is slowly moving. And I'm not defending CCP. I'm telling you right now, 20 years ago, don't tell me that, hey, you cannot build factories when these people are starving. They're in deep poverty. So compared to 
their, 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 their current situation to live, to provide for their family, or to listen to some Western country that comes in and tell us you cannot do this and that. I want to try to produce so my family can eat. And then now they're developed. China's developed. They're starting to move it. Who's, tell, who's telling another country they can and cannot do things? We're not telling China. We're the big brother, Jim. We've always been the big brother. No, no. that's what I object to about the Paris Climate Accords. You think they're going to tell everybody and then go enforce them? No, they're not. No, there's economic, economic sanctions. There are different uh, negotiation tactics. This world is built on negotiation and compromises. Trump's way did not work. We lost out. China grew, got stronger while we got weaker. Russia got stronger. Everybody that despises us are celebrating this. Finally, we're coming back. It, this four years might take 40 years to recover from. But if you cannot admit, if you cannot agree at least, that we have gone backwards in the last four years, that as Americans, we are, we are trying to catch up now. I, then I, I, I think in the Trump administration, there were two radically different periods. There were the first three years, and there was the fourth year, which is dominated by the pandemic. And by the way, the U.S. has not gone backwards nearly as far as most European countries. And China, I don't trust any of their statistics. You can tell me all of this. You can tell me all of that. I don't believe any of it. You know, this is the problem with our Western arrogance. This is the problem. People tell me the same thing about COVID. We don't trust their numbers. China did hide it just like Trump did. But in the end, lots of people died in China. They told us we're mass distance controlling. We didn't listen. The numbers are fake. They, them trying to control numbers, and whether we believe it or not, we cannot doubt everything. We cannot think everything is a conspiracy theory. If you follow the rabbit, go down the rabbit hole, there's no turning back. So, yes, it's easy to just deny responsibility and accountability and say, China, 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 Russia, Russia, Russia. You don't have to believe any numbers. No, I just told you. I'm, not hey, I'm, I'm in investment. Look at their numbers with, with ele electronic vehicle. Look at living there where there's no plastic bags. You have to bring your own bag. Living there. I live there. I know. I've been there. Where they're not, they don't allow you to just throw out trash. Here in Houston, we don't even care what kind of trash they throw out there. It's not even recycling bin when you put it outside. Hmm. When we go to supermarkets, we still use plastic. This is the most basic. So you might not trace their numbers. But I sure trust what I see with everybody doing it. So this Western arrogance has to stop. This is the problem. What Trump has done is to, to, to we used to take accountability and responsibility, and we used to negotiate. We used to have compromises. Now it's uh, I, I, well. One, you're saying in all those things you just mentioned that I'm saying certain things that I never said. So. And everything that's but bad. You know, trust the numbers. So no matter what I say, it doesn't matter because China's numbers must be fake. Russia's numbers is fake. Everybody's fake except for us. I don't know. Maybe many of our numbers are fake too. Um, <laughs> no, I, I don't think I, our numbers are fake, my friend. Well, I, I, I got to tell you, I don't believe all the COVID death numbers. Wow. Anybody who died that had COVID in their system is labeled a COVID death, even if it's a gunshot victim, even if it's an auto wreck victim. I don't. And every death counts the same. Jim, Somebody that was 85 years old that had comorbidities that was going to die within the next year anyway. <laughs> I, it, uh, this, yeah, I think it's, I think it's very, very it, misleading. It saddens me and it's offensive to me when you bring that up because you sound just like all my, my right wing extremist friends that's on Parler. Four hundred thousand dead, and we're still doubting it. Oh, yeah. four hundred thousand. Some of it is fake. Maybe a hundred thousand died on their own. Please, I know people that died from COVID. I know people that went on ventilators. Please. I know people that passed away last week, a very well-known uh, 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 figure in our, our community here, in the Chinese American community in Houston, a very famous sculptor. He passed away last week. It, everyone wondered if it's COVID. No, official statement. He died from a heart attack. It's not COVID. I have friends that went to the hospital. They're not going to just categorize as COVID when it's not. And the fact is, the overwhelming burden on the medical community because of COVID does affect the re resources. It does affect all that. But for you to question everything, Jim, this is why our country is in trouble. This is why. This is exactly why. 
400,000 dead and we're still trying to blame others. We're still trying to say the numbers are fake. 400,000 dead. I'm not trying to blame anybody. I'm not blaming anybody. The numbers are fake, right? The numbers are fake. There's a conspiracy. I don't know. I never said conspiracy. So why is the numbers fake? I believe believe that the numbers, I didn't say they're fake. I said they're misleading. It's misleading. Okay, you know, this is why me and you, when we have a conversation, is very important. Because when I talk to my friends that that hold the same view as you, they focus on the numbers are misleading. China's numbers are misleading. Um, oh my God, Biden's going to raise the, the minimum wage to $15. My business is not going to make it. Oh my God, they're just following Obama's footsteps. Everything's the same. Everything is suspicious, questioning. Nothing is true anymore. Nothing. Because if I don't agree with that, then I'll say the m- numbers are misleading. Mm-hmm. If I don't agree with some, hey, then there's no way this is right. We, we have to stop doing this, Jim. Me and you and, and the rest well, of the- uh, you, now you brought, Now you've brought up the minimum wage. We can talk about the minimum wage. Oh, I don't God. blame that on anybody. Do I think that's good economic policy? No, I don't. I think the free market should determine what labor is worth. If you want to if you want to boost that, that's okay, but you're going to put some businesses out of business. You're going to restrict employment opportunities for particularly young people on temporary jobs. But if that's what you want to do, fine. Go talk to the state of Washington. It closed a lot of restaurants pre-pandemic because that's exactly what they did. Tim, can we agree that the countries that did shut down early have recovered? You know, no matter how much we despise China, their economy grew by 18%. These are, this is not a made up number. This is facts. You cannot say the numbers are misleading. The countries that shut down, like China, Taiwan, Singapore, they've recovered. They reopened back up. You want to talk about you want to talk about minimum wage. Talk about people in the state of Washington. You talk about the people in New York or California. How much is ten dollars an hour? That's twenty k for the year if they work forty hour weeks. You tell me that your kids could live on twenty k a, a, a year. Is that a livable uh-huh. wage? And then you're right. Texas with a lower a lower cost of living, so maybe fifteen is too much. I'm not saying that I agree with, with, with Joe Biden, with President Biden's policy. All I know is that, yes, it is a double-edged sword, okay? But you do need people to have money to, to, to spend, to, to, to put back into the economy. So that, because we, you know, as, as conservatives, oh, we don't want government programs. We don't want these people on welfare. Well, then you raise the minimum wage, people have a liberal wage, and you don't need to be on welfare. Like I said again, Trumpers, you cannot get both. You cannot argue both sides and always want to just argue for the sake of arguing or the numbers are misleading. Or, or that's what I thought about minimum wage. I, what I'd rather do, if California wants to have better employment, they should open up restaurants. You know how many people has died in LA, in the San Fran, in California? Open up restaurants? We could, we would open restaurants if we believed in science and wore masks and not question the people that are dead and blame China. Because if, if, if our, our, our Mr. Trump didn't tell us to inject bleach and tell us not to wear masks, we would open up. Do not come out here and say we should do this and that when you're the ones that didn't listen, that didn't, we don't want to wear masks. I don't want a social distance. I'm I not going to mask. blame the economy because of that. I wear a mask wherever I go. No, I mean, not you. I meant the people in California that are complaining or in Washington are complaining. We want the restaurants opened up. It's my freedom. It's my freedom. You're infringing on my, my right as an American. Please cut the charade. I'm so tired, even after yesterday. I'm tired of hearing this, the same thing from all my conservative friends. This, this alternate reality has to stop. We have to believe in science. We cannot say, oh, Dr. Fauci, well, his numbers are misleading. Oh, I don't trust the government. Oh, I don't trust Chinese numbers. Uh, uh, they need to open up the restaurant because we cannot live so that we don't have to, have to raise minimum wage. Huh? The mistake has been made. Our COVID res- response is a sham. Trump has failed our people. Almost half a million dead. These are numbers. You cannot fudge these numbers. You cannot say it's misleading. And now we're still blaming Obama or, or these liberal states or, or uh, China or Russia. Stop. Stop. Stop this facade. Stop this farce. We have to roll up our sleeves and say, let's, let, let's see what worked and what didn't. Let's see that if we could recover. Okay. Okay. Just, just take, just take a couple of things. Okay. 
why can we go to restaurants in Texas, but you can't go to restaurants in in California or New York State Jim. Uh, and eat inside? Jim. Uh, and I don't think our incidence of either new infections or hospitalizations or deaths in Texas are any worse than California and New York. <sighs> Wow, why can't we eat? Let me ask you, have you seen the headlines in local news the last two days, I mean, national news, that, that they had to shut down these so-called restaurants? I don't know if you've heard of Spire or Clay. You chronicle front page uh, okay. okay. that's, yeah, that's a bar pretending to be exactly. a restaurant. Exactly. So if we don't shut them down, as Americans, we're going to pretend this is we serve food. People are going to go out. Look at this. This is not a one-time incident. This is over the past year, nonstop doing this. Hundreds of people without masks spreading it. Okay. It, Why is it, it other countries can listen and we don't? Is it really? Big? Oh, good Lord. So please don't tell me why can we why can't we go out and eat? Why can we go out and eat in Texas and in California they cannot? Because people do not listen. Because people do not respect science. Because okay, what, maybe it's not say, maybe it's our problem. You say you say Californians and New Yorkers misbehave more than Texans do. No, so I'm not. I'm saying nobody behave. listens. Hmm? I'm telling you what happened in Houston and then Clay and Spire is the same. It happens everywhere. You, you got two nightclubs that have misbehaved. And, and they have misbehaved by committing fraud themselves. For so, over a year. They well, then where, then, then where are the law enforcement authorities that can't... Ask can't Governor Allen. Ask hmm? the conservative people that believe this is a farce. The numbers are misleading. The deaths are not real. Ask him. Because we did try to shut it down. The governor shut it down as a state mandate. I cannot believe this is going on. We cannot complain about not opening up restaurants, but we're the ones that complain, oh, back then, hey, hey, I don't want to shut this down. I don't believe in science. And now everybody's dying, and you're like, oh, well, well, that's not fair. Don't, don't blame our, our mayor or, or our, our uh, county. <sighs> I'm sorry. I just know when this happened, when the order came in to shut down eight months ago, Mayor Turner and Ms. Alvarado, the county, the city, all wanted to shut it down. City of Dallas wanted to shut it down. They did. The governor, I don't forget these. Governor Abbott came down using state orders and said, no, we over, override you guys. So please don't tell me, don't question it. When it's your governor, it's your president that did We cannot deny and shed responsibility and not say, well, I mean, why didn't we shut down then? Well, I want to open it now. We could go on and eat. How come, how come California, New York? New York, heart shut down. And that back then, people criticized, oh, it's the, it's the governor Cuomo's liberal, a Democrat. Everything is about politics now. What about science? What if I actually believe in science? I don't care what, what party affiliation it is. I follow science. I, I listen to Dr. Fauci. And thus, other countries did it. Why can't we? And now you want to question it? You want to say, oh, well, they don't, why don't we? Come on. Ask Abbott. Ask your governor why. Ask Ted Cruz. Ask, ask Trump why. I, this is what we're doing today. And now we're still, off and we're still paying for it. We're still arguing about something that is a fact. 400,000 dead. Abbott did the Senate mandate. We, what do we, Jim, how do we, how do we unite? How do we recover from this? When you're still questioning, it's good to question things, to, 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 to not trust authority 100%. But if you question everything and everything's a conspiracy, then we're done. I, I, I'm just saying, if you're in Houston, we enjoy a lot more freedom, uh, in freedom and uh, in Houston and in Texas than California does, and California has it worse than we do. I agree with you, and more people died in Houston than any. I mean, we're the epic center, Jim. Texas is an epic center. New York, California has more population, but why are we? See that that proves my point. Your argument is safe. Of course, we have more died. Are you saying that we don't have more deaths than anyone? We do. U.S. is the worst. Texas is the worst in U.S. And Houston is the worst in Texas. We're the epic center of the world when it comes to COVID. And you're asking me why? The numbers prove itself. We enjoy more freedoms. That's why there's more death. Because we enjoy our freedom too much. Because we're Texans. We do whatever we want. We're a red state. If you and I really want to have a legitimate argument about this stuff, uh -huh. we need to have a common set of Agreed. data. Uh -huh. 
that we look at, not, oh, I talked to this guy or I got this from Fauci or I got that. Oh, now we're requesting Dr. Fauci. All different kinds of things. Oh, if now you we're requesting Fauci and 400,000 dead. Okay, okay. So if, but the parameters have to be set up by Trump and his followers only. Only if we agree on their numbers, because the numbers by Dr. Fauci, we cannot trust. China numbers, for sure, we cannot trust, even though we know they opened up. We know their economy grew by 18%. We know those numbers are not released by China. It's by a world banking organization. You know what? Everything that we, we're arguing about doesn't matter anymore, Jim, because he's gone. There's no one to blame anymore. Before it's easy, blame Trump. Oh, I, I, I think the best thing that Mr. Trump can do is fade into oblivion. Oh, he's going to jail, sir. He is going to jail. Somebody has to pay for the people that died in the insurrection last week. These are treasonous insurrectionists. Treason. He committed treason. Mr. McConnell, who I hate, came out and said it. Well, obviously, he's that, that, that Trump is, is responsible. He did incite. This, are, this was your Republican leaders. They all came out and said it now. So I don't know what is it to argue with deny anymore. He said that. So let's see what happens. Let's see what Mr. Biden's priorities really are to get his new uh, administration off uh, to a fast start or to turn around and to punish Trump. To me, punish? You mean hold people responsible for murdering innocent Americans? Well, let's see. Or let's, inciting treason. This is not about, this, don't put this on Biden. Let's, so, let's, somebody committed a crime. You're telling me that if I kill someone, well, it's up to the judge to want to provide unity and peace or follow the law and punish this person. It's always double standard. It is always double standard when it comes to Trumpers. I don't understand that. I, okay, you know what? This is not you. See, I'm talking about Trumpers and my friends that are extremists, not you. You're talking about points that are brought up by a certain one third of the nation. Yes, I agree with you. I am very defensive and very worked up. And you know, you know, I'm like this, but you know why it's because Jim, let's, let's be frank. You didn't get the vaccine. Neither did I. My mom, I, 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 got, the, I got the vaccine earlier this week. Oh, first. congratulations. My mom still haven't gone yet. My mm -hmm. other elderly, we respect our elders in the Chinese culture have not gone yet. They're, yeah. they're, they got appointments winning line. This makes me very, very angry. Uh, Look, I, I agree. I think the, 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 not, not the creation of the vaccine, that went very well. The distribution of the vaccine, the manufacturing, the capacity and the distribution are woefully inadequate, terribly done, terribly done. And it leads to all kinds of misbehavior all up and down the line. People trying to jump ahead, get the vaccine before other people get it. When, when things go wrong, and people don't trust the system. Misbehavior happens all over sir, the place. Sir, our country, its moral, its moral standard is not built like this. If somebody could, when it's a life and death situation, and because you have more money or more status, you can skip the line, then it means fundamentally, maybe Russia and China is right about us. Maybe democracy doesn't work. Maybe our United States style of democracy doesn't work. Because that, for democracy to work, you have to have an educated voter base. You have to have someone that can think logically, reasonably. Mm -hmm. Once this device starts, starting from Reagan, we're, we're past the point of no, no return. <laughs> they did a poll of European Union leaders of looking at the next decade. 60, over 60% 60 of European leaders have said that China will overtake US as the number one economy. And before Trump left office, they categorized China as how they treat Uyghurs as genocide. You know, I, I, I know that with China's problems, we already know. We know what, what, what they are about. But how do we, how do we, our show has, you've always said that, that we could coexist peacefully, be competitive. Where our, I always remember what you said, that human nature, we want to provide for our family, Mm -hmm. For a good, for living a life, mm -hmm. I, I I don't I don't I don't see that if we continue this this questioning signs and Dr. Fauci and everything is about politics, then we, we're not we're, we're just not going to move forward from this. I, I, I don't necessarily think everything is about politics. I think it is unfortunate that so much has been that's come about politics, but I think it's 
it's it's very unfortunate that our government, our governments, plural, have mishandled things. I'm the first to be critical of how a lot of the COVID activity in the U.S. has been mishandled. Absolutely. I'm not trying to defend Mr. Trump on this. Uh, what happened to him? OK, Jim, what about our friends? There still says stop the steal. There's a, the process is wrong. We just talked about it last week. Wow, the, this election was stolen. What happened to that? What happened to the insurrection? What happened to the hope that Trump would do this and that? He left with a whimper. If you look at every video from four years ago, we all knew this would happen. If he loses, he will not leave. He will create. What happened last week, two weeks ago, was an act of treason. If our shows and people, we, we, we still want to just deny it and put this on Biden and say, does he want to hate and punish that means we could do, as politicians and leaders, we could do whatever we want, as long as we win. It doesn't matter how you do it. That's not what I teach my kids. I don't want my kids to win no matter how. This is not what my pastor teaches us or what the Bible tells us. But that's what Trump and the Republicans are telling us. As long as you win, it's okay. Oh, I mean, come on. Trump didn't do anything. It's not treasonous. This is on Biden's fault, whether he wants to punish. This is ridiculous, right? No, not necessarily. I mean, so, so just think about how to handle it. So Nancy Pelosi got the House to vote positively on impeachment. To my knowledge, she has not sent the articles of impeachment yet to the Senate. OK, it's not clear to me that it's clear to her that President Biden wants it to go to the Senate, because when it goes to the Senate, the Senate must act on it. If you want to punish President Trump, and I understand. Not punish. Hold people accountable. That's fine. When you commit a crime in this country, you will pay law and order. You will pay for your crime. Okay, so let me finish. So then he could have a special prosecutor or just assign a whole number of lawyers in the Justice Department to go investigate and charge, indict President Trump on crimes that he committed while he was in office. They can do that. It's not clear to me or to anyone else that you can um, impeach and convict a former president, do it while he's in office, but the whole point of impeachment and Senate conviction is to throw him out of office. He's already out of office. If he if he committed crimes while he was in office, fine, investigate him, charge him, try him, and if possible, convict him. That is what President Ford wanted not to happen, not just to President Nixon, but to the rest of the country. We've talked about that in prior shows. If President Biden makes a different decision, he can he can allocate resources within the Justice Department to do exactly what I said. And I would be the first guy to encourage him to do that. Let's find out if that's actually going to be the hey, case. You know what? Your argument also worked two months ago since the election. Oh, there must be some kind of process is wrong. Let's let it go through the court process. Yeah. You know, let's make sure that he didn't lose the election by fraud. Well, after we go through all that, oh, let's insurrect these, let's go to Capitol and, and stop the count and stop the steal. Everything is, yeah, go through the process. Hey, you know what? During the process, more people have died. Jim, let me say you. Jim, give me time. While murdering someone, give me time and trust the process, okay? Too late, they're dead. Right. So we're not punishing anyone. We're holding accountable in future insurrection, treasonous people. We're holding future ones responsible. That's if you pull this in the most holy of offices, the President of the United States is this office that there is a lot of burden, integrity, honor, truth. You cannot desecrate this office. And if you do, there's not punish. There's not one law. You've broke so many laws. And by the way, Mitch McConnell did say they're going to try to do this in February. This is not about going back to a starting blame. This is to make sure this doesn't happen again. Because if till this day, if you think that Trump is not responsible for the capital riots, if you think he's not responsible for COVID and where we're at. I haven't said I haven't said one way or another whether I think he is or he isn't. What but I, I you tell you, the, 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 okay. The, okay. But I can tell you that the people who misbehaved on January sixth are incited by him. Clear. They, they've been interviewed. 
They have to admit it on camera. I went because President Trump told me to. Mr. Then McConnell do, has said that. Then do two very important things. Try and convict them for their misbehavior mm-hmm. and try and convict Mr. Trump for his misbehavior. Great. Fine. We should, we should. Do it. And other than that, shut the F up. Get on with it. Jim, okay. Jim, we said that two months ago. Why don't we tell Trump to shut the F up and get on with it? It's always, if he loses, we keep arguing. It's this double standard again. It's double standard. Nobody's shutting the F up. We are doing it. But the, the, the Trumpers are saying, well, this is not his fault. Don't, don't this is all Biden, whether he wants unity and peace. This is Obama's fault. This is Pelosi's fault. Don't confuse two other things. Don't confuse two things. We cannot don't don't confuse, everything. Don't confuse the misbehavior that those guys did at the Capitol on January 6th. Encouraged by the president, incited by the president. Fine, if you think so, fine. But don't don't confuse that with the question of were the results of the election legitimate? (laughs) It doesn't matter whether those are legitimate or not. Those guys misbehaved. And they should be punished for that. They should be held accountable. Just like Trump should. Okay, if he was part of that, fine. Jim, the example I keep using is this. What we talked about before, freedom of speech. Me and you have a a public forum. We're not a political leader. But even then, I cannot mean you cannot sit here on the show and say, let's go to Austin. You guys should go burn, loot, and steal. Because we we have a responsibility. So does Trump and his people. Jimmy, I'm saying just, I'm agreeing with you. Those guys. I know you are. I know you are. They misbehaved. They need to be held account. For you know, it's sad. It's sad that the people that are going to jail for this, it's because they will. It's sad because they believe, they still do. They're true believers. They believe this, this is a stolen election. They believe everything they incited. But they're just normal people. They, 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 they're doing this because in their mind, they're doing this to protect their country and democracy. That's what is a shame and sad. And this all was caused by one person. One person. Okay. The, the, those, guys, those guys are extremists. I don't think they represent any broad base of American political thought or social strata. I, I don't. I, I think they're a bunch of fringe individuals that, that make a great deal of noise, totally misbehave. I believe, too. That Five lives were lost. Five. Remember, five lives were lost. So all this, what you're saying, sounds to me it's like denying accountability again. The, the count that I've heard is three, two other people had heart attacks or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just, it's just like whole numbers, you know, it's debatable. Oh. The numbers are always debatable. So, yeah. Okay. Did you see videos of the Capitol Police being beamed down? Did you see the videos of them being beamed down by these so-called patriots? The, yeah. What happened to law and order and uh, uh, back the blue, that all lives matter? What happened to that? They're beating down Capitol Police. When, when BLM does it, Oh my God, these people are breaking law. What happened to this? Where's all the noise? So how many BLM people are in jail in Seattle and in hey, Wisconsin? BLM, BLM were protesting for the loss of lives, for African Americans being murdered okay. throughout the place. What are, what, what are these people going to capital for? Who died in their family? Who has been systematically abused? Do we not agree about the George Floyd is wrong? Okay. Are we not saying there is police brutality? Why is it about politics? It comes down to this is whether, whether you have empathy, compassion, and whether you care for people that are more disadvantaged. So if you want to compare BLM with these insurrection, treasonous folks, no, that, that is an insult to the people that march peacefully at BLM. Riders at BLM, did they kill any police officers? Did they attack the Capitol? Did the police, did any police die? So when you say, oh, not I died, only three died, but the two is hard to die, that is ridiculous. That is absolutely unacceptable. Trump and his supporters broke laws. They have admitted that they, the president decided them. Mitch McConnell has admitted that Trump decided them. There is no argument about this anymore. They need to go to jail. If it takes this much to do this, then our country is in big trouble, Jim. We're in big, big trouble. And for you to say BLM, I'm like, this is it. Well, okay, you know what? Just blame it on TIFA. It's easier. And TIFA did this. You know what? The people that did this. I, I, right? I don't know who some of those people are or were. Oh, I'm think, sorry, sir. The media I, has put them all out. None of them were in TIFA. Technology is amazing. People are turning in their spouses, and they're not hiding it. These people, these extremists are bragging about it. None of them is a TIFA. You're, are you talking about? No, no, no. You're, you're, 
the writers. You're, the, you're, the you're, referring to the pe- you're referring to the people in Washington on the 6th. Yes. I was talking about the people in Seattle, Wisconsin, Portland, Minneapolis. I don't know who those people are. Yeah. And I have very, very good, very strong observation that those people are no longer in jail. Jim, what is wrong with being anti five fascists? Explain to me. It is being fascist good. Do I Antifa, think what? what is wrong with anti fascists? Nothing is wrong with it philosophically, but it's it's very wrong if they burn down buildings, if they loot stores, if if they harm other people in the process. That's very wrong. Do you and see me arguing and say, okay, good. Do you see me argue and say, hey, only of out of the five, only three died. So Antifa is not really responsible. No, if they did that, they need to go to jail. Okay, and let me let me be clear: police and law and order are mostly going to be Trumpers. They're not going to let this go. How many police officers have not have been acquitted of murder? So let's be clear. You're talking about a group of people that have the power, a group of, a group of people that are disadvantaged. And you're telling me, under the law, we have a right to protest. We don't have a right to fight. We don't have a right to break into Capitol and, and beat police. Yeah. How many protests were there during BLM? How many? How many police officers died? That is a very, very unfair statement to BLM. I am not African-American. I, I, I... I, I will never pretend to know the pain and this indiscretions and the crimes committed against them. But as a minority in this country, you cannot tell me that I don't feel this bamboo ceiling or this, this, this superiority or the Western or the Caucasian. I mean, that's a fact. I am not someone to sit here and say, because of my color, I'm disadvantaged. I need to get welfare and help. I'm not that. Because my parents are immigrants. We came here, worked our ass off and made it. I got, I got two graduate degrees on my own, not because of my color. I never say because of Chinese, I deserve this and that. But I'm not going to sit here and say, hey, the BLM folks, they're all rioters. No, they're not. There are peaceful protests, protests everywhere in the U.S. Everywhere there was peaceful protests. Okay. And, yeah. and we, we've, we've caught the people that did, did set ar- the arsonists. We caught them. They were, they were not Antifa. They were not BLM. Okay. We, this is, this is, these are facts. These are not made up. There are people that sit there and, and riot and, and criminal elements. Because if you say this, that means all criminals equals black or all criminals equals black and brown. That, that doesn't work that way. It doesn't. They, they have a right to protest. They have a right because people are dying. What are these treasonous fools protesting for and, and uh, killing people for in the Capitol? Did someone in their race died? No. They listened to their leader, the, 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 this cult. Uh, inciting them. So to me, it's, it's an insult to ever drag in BLM into these treasonous fools in Washington. That is not fair. That is an insult to BLM protesters. Our country cannot continue like this when we're still arguing about this. We're still, the divide is so great. This is, and you know, this is sad, is me and you, we're pretty logical people. We're, we're, we're very close, so we could talk like this. Most of us, uh, in private amongst our friends, we'll never get to this point, Jim, right? We're kind of like, ah, we're friends, let's have a glass of wine, forget it. If me and you were sitting in person, we will never get this worked out. Am I right? Because we're, we're, we're sitting there, we're, right? To, to, to me, it's very simple. People want to protest, do all the protesting you want peacefully. You start burning buildings, you start running cars through crowds, you start... Um, ransacking and looting stores, all bets are off. Just like the rioters in Capitol, right? Yeah, I think there were thousands of people who were peacefully protesting in Washington. You had a couple hundred, maybe a thousand or two. I don't know how to judge the numbers in the crowd who misbehave. And you don't think this applies to BLM? There are millions protesting and very small elements broke the law after the protest ends. Why is it double standard? Why is this applied to the Washington rioters and it doesn't apply to the BLM protesters? How does that work logically? I, 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 I don't know. I've seen so many tapes of protest marches in New York and other cities that say that has BLM marchers saying, we hate pigs, fry them like bacon. We hate pigs, fly, fry them like they bacon. Buy them? How many police officers died? Give me one single one. Out of the hundreds of thousands of protests, millions of protests, tell me one officer died. 
one, not a single one. How many officers died in the Capitol insurrection two weeks ago? How many? This is a fact. These are facts. We cannot deny it. We cannot question it and say they're questionable. Yeah. Okay? I, I, I this think is why I'm angry because you this is this is the typical right rights, the 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 the, the extremists, the Trumpers, this is the way to argue at hominem. It's, it's always blame, blame, accused, drag me blame. It's Obama's fault. It's Pelosi's fault. It's Biden. It's on Biden. Oh, Trump did maybe criminal crime or not. It doesn't matter. It's on Biden, whether he wants to reconcile or, or he wants to punish. No, 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 no. We cannot double, have double standard every time when it comes to him and his, his people. We cannot. What happened two weeks ago at Capitol Rights is, is, a, is definitive. Okay. It's I, 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 I've said it, Jimmy. Those people should be held to account. Okay. They, sh they should be arrested. They should be held. They should be tried. And if they're guilty, find them guilty. Same thing should be done for the people who looted buildings, burned things in other cities, whoever they may be. What about the police officers that murdered African-Americans indiscriminately? Thousands of lives lost. What about I, that? I absolutely don't buy that. That hasn't been wow. That hasn't been proven. All these videos, because of the advantage of technology, this has been going on for so long. Only the last few years we see it because you, everyone has you smartphone. Go, you go look at the evidence of George Floyd. George Floyd died from a drug overdose. He didn't die from the thing on the net. Okay, my and friend. Yeah, you, you had. The attorney general from the state of Minnesota, Keith Ellison, has withheld evidence from- My friend, the, my friend, friend this, is, this is a shame. In the grand jury. Jim, this is a shame. Did you see the video? I don't care what kind of drugs he has on. You do not sit on somebody and choke and, them. And Jimmy, I saw a whole lot more. Hey, Jimmy, wow. we, we are beyond our time. I've, I've, I've got other things to do. We will continue next week, because if you're questioning this, then everything is a sham. I, I think a great deal is, yeah. Did this this poor guy that got shot in the back seven times? I think that cop overreacted. He now admits he was armed. Let's just end this. Up. Have a great weekend, Jim. I, I hope I hope uh, you you get on with whatever it is. But uh, we will continue next week. Okay. 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 Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye.